In this video, I'm going to show you the exact type of wheel that you should be using in order to cross the obstacles found in the WRO 2022 Junior Challenge. No matter what your robot design is, you're going to have to cross by driving over them, so the choice of wheel is very important. In theory, having treads like these would be the best way to solve the challenge because you'd be able to drive over and the treads would just adapt to the surface that they're on, maintaining a consistent amount of friction. But realistically, you shouldn't be using these because they're going to slow down your robot for the other tasks in the challenge. And so what you want to do is you want to get as close as possible to these kinds of treads without actually using them. And so this means that you want to get thick wheels as well as small ones that remain close to the ground. And this is why. Here's a set of two large wheels. When I try to move them over this blue part, you'll see that number one, there's not a lot of contact between the tires and the obstacle that I was trying to go over, and that it also requires a lot of force for me to move it over because it's making contact with this in a small area. And so this means that your robot has to do more work in order to get over these obstacles. And once it's over, the center of mass for the robot is also going to be located very high up. And this means that your robot could potentially tilt and fall down. And having large wheels is already unstable. And by trying to make them cross a platform like this, they could end up tipping over and causing your robot to fall. Having minor variations in direction of the robot was not going to matter because you can adjust that after crossing the obstacle. But it would be very unfortunate if your robot ended up tipping and being unable to solve the rest of the missions. To show you this more clearly, let me explain this to you showing only one wheel. When I bring this one wheel here, you'll notice that it's able to move a lot like this. And this directly translates to the stability of the robot when it's crossing this. Because this wheel is able to move around a lot, this means the robot's going to be able to also fall down through the same mechanism. Now, compare what I just showed to this type of wheel. This type of wheel is much thicker and it's also much smaller. And when it tries to cross this, you'll notice that it's making a lot more contact with the obstacle, which means that it requires less work in order for me to push this over and get it over both obstacles. If you don't believe me, you can try comparing a big wheel and a small wheel like this. And once I moved it on, it's also really difficult for me to tilt the robot because it's making a lot of contact with the obstacle, and so it's just as stable as if it were on ground. Again, let me show you with one wheel. When I move this on, it requires very little work, and when I move it here, it's much more difficult for me to tilt it like this because it's making more contact with the surface. And I've shown you the blue obstacles, but let me show you how this also holds true for the green obstacles. But before I show you the green box, subscribe to the channel and like this video. So these are the green obstacles, and in theory you have a choice of whether you solve them like this, where you go over both of these, and then skip the middle one and go over two again, or you try to escape the first set and only cross in the middle like this. Either way, with the big one, you're having even less to build because you're not guaranteed to be on a consistent surface. What could end up happening is your robot could end up being in such a proportion that you might have to cross it like this. And whenever big wheels are on two different surfaces like this, it's going to end terribly, and your robot is almost guaranteed to flip over, especially with other weight being on there. But if you compare this to having large wheels, even if you have proportions where they're going to have to be on an uneven surface. Because this larger wheel is making more contact with the ground over here, it's going to remain overall more stable and it's going to be harder to flip over even if you have a weight imbalance. What you should take away from this video is that you should be using small and thick wheels in order to get the best chance in order to cross these obstacles without having any tr problems. Now, of course, if you have small and thick wheels, you're also going to be slow on other parts of the map which is why I don't re recommend going too small, and I actually prefer these wheels. I tried these wheels and they work pretty well for the Junior Challenge. They are 56 by 28 ZR wheels, which you can find the link to buy in the description below. You can also find more tips and tricks for the WRO competition, as well as the FLL competition on my website, link below. If you want to see more content, you should subscribe to the channel and like this video.